Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Unit 9, where we will be talking about Ivan Pavlov and his drooling dogs. And I have some cartoons of uh, Pavlov, relevant to Pavlov here. They'll make sense to you by the end of this segment, I promise. Learning. What is learning? Well, learning is said to occur when there's some change in your behavior, um, and that change is relatively permanent. And importantly, it's the result of some experience that you've had. So learning involves experience, which makes it different from something like an instinct or genetically programmed behavior. So for example, what do I mean by instinct? If you take a frog and uh, you put a little black speck near the frog and move it around, the frog will automatically stick its tongue out and grab that little black speck. Why? Because frogs have pre-programmed in them uh, a, a motor output, a, a tongue movement, in response to something that's a speck, a fly shaped, and moving like a fly. Okay? No one taught the frog to grab a fly in this way. They were born that way, right? Instinct. Uh, salmon um, go back to spawn in the very stream that they were born in. Right? No one had to teach. There's no salmon school. Nobody taught salmon to do that. That's an instinct. What we are talking about in this lecture is learning. And learning is a lot more flexible than instinct. So, for example, uh, salmon, you know, in the U.S., we're, <laughs> the long-term uh, situation for salmon is not good. Uh, because we pollute our streams or put dams in them. Uh, we complicate things for the salmon. And the salmon, they can't do anything else. They can't go to salmon school and learn that it's okay for them to spawn in a different stream. Right? So learning is much more flexible than instinct. Um, I'm going to use the word stimulus and response a lot in this lecture. A stimulus just means anything that you can perceive. It could be something you see, something you hear, something you smell, something you taste. It's something that your sensory systems respond to. That's a stimulus. And a response is your response to that stimulus. The kind of learning that we're going to talk about today or in this lecture, Unit 9, but also in the next set of lectures, Unit 10, is a kind of learning called conditioning. And I don't mean, you know, conditioner for your hair. I mean learning associations. That's what conditioning is, learning associations. So, for example, um, a seal might be fooling around. In, in the wild, seals uh, are very playful and they'll balance things on their nose. And if a, a seal is around humans that want to see a, a seal balance something on its nose, then the humans would give the seal a fish every time the seal balanced something on its nose. And what do you know? The seal learns very quickly. Aha! I get rewarded for balancing something on my nose. So uh, we and other animals are terrific at learning associations, right? events that go together. Another example, maybe you have a child that all of a sudden doesn't want to go to school. Maybe they loved school before or were indifferent to it, but now they absolutely do not want to go to school. Why? Well, one possibility is they were bullied in school or the teacher embarrassed them or picked on them. So what the, the, your child learns is that school makes me feel bad, right? School may result in me being beaten up or uh, humiliated for my learning disability or whatever. And so then they learn that association, school is bad, they don't want to go to school anymore. That's conditioning. There, the two types of conditioning are associated with two primary researchers. We're going to talk about a kind of conditioning to, in this set of lectures called classical conditioning. Classic, so classical conditioning. And classical conditioning is learning to associate two stimuli. Um, a lot of times it's about learning what reactions people have to things. Um, you don't, uh, the, a person or an animal doesn't have to do anything in classical conditioning. It's just our response. Um, 
And we're going to talk a lot about Ivan Pavlov. He's the guy associated with classical conditioning and the guy with the drooling dogs. The other form of conditioning we will talk about in Unit 10, it's called operant conditioning. Operant, I always think of it as like an operation. The person or animal has to do something, has to perform something uh, in operant conditioning. So in operant conditioning, it's the learning to associate, not to stimuli, but learning to associate an action with its consequence. And B.F. Skinner, very famous American psychologist, is most strongly associated with operant conditioning. So two kinds of conditioning. Classical conditioning that we're going to talk about in this unit and operant conditioning, which we'll talk about in the next unit. What is classical conditioning? So classical conditioning is when you learn to associate some reaction with a stimulus that started out not necessarily being associated with that action. And, and let me give you um, an example of that. So classical conditioning involves involuntary, so you, you're not intentionally doing something, they're involuntary and automatic reactions. So here's a great example, actually it's a terrible example, but it's a great example of classical conditioning. Let's say you go out with some friends and you go to a restaurant and you have shrimp. And it turns out that the shrimp were bad, and so you get food poisoning, and you're very, very sick from eating the shrimp, okay? What happens the next time you sit down to dinner and somebody puts a plate of shrimp in front of you? Oof, get it away from me, Ugh. right? That is classical conditioning. You have learned to associate shrimp with getting sick. And we are super good at learning associations related to food and also alcohol. I have to say there was a party in graduate school that I drank, I'd never had whiskey before and I drank too much whiskey. It got sick to this day and that was, oh my God, how long ago was that? Over 30 years ago. To this day, the smell of whiskey makes me sick. Classical conditioning. Um, also called conditioned taste aversion, right? So your disdain for shrimp, it's a kind of classical conditioning. It has a special name, taste aversion, conditioned taste aversion. Uh, here's another example of classical conditioning and vaccine season is coming up, so this one's very relevant. The first time you take a baby into a doctor's office to get a vaccine, the doctor or the nurse walks up with a needle and the baby just looks at the needle and doesn't have any thoughts about the needle one way or the other. The needle doesn't mean anything to a baby because it hasn't had an experience with needles yet. But then the baby gets the shot and it hurts, right? The baby learns uh, shots or needles means pain, shot means pain. And uh, after that happens, maybe once or twice, anytime the baby sees a needle, they start crying, they get upset because they've learned that needles mean pain. Or maybe what they learned was the doctor's office me means pain, right? That would be another form of classical conditioning. So you'll see in, in this unit that learning fear through classical conditioning is very powerful. Okay, come right back and we'll learn all about Ivan Pavlov and his drooling dogs in all sorts of gory detail. <laughs>